And um, with this new technology, and that's what this show Beyond Research is all about, we want to go into a discussion what actually defines a human, because market research still is a, a, is a human activity. However, like with the example we just heard from Anwar, more and more technology is moving into the space. So much that in our next segment, we actually want to explore whether at some point artificial intelligence will actually completely replace the market researchers. But before we do that, look at this great inspirational movie that tells us what it is to be human. The realm of possibility and impossibility overlaps in the field of human augmentation. So it's a good time to be asking, what is fantasy and what is reality? Ultimately, what it means to me to be human is the ability to make choices. To be human is to be highly adaptive and to seek, as we march into the future, a better and better life. I don't feel comfortable with the word human. I consider myself a cyborg. I don't think that the question of humanity is changed in the slightest by the actual composition of your body. You know, you might be smarter than I am and taller and more handsome and faster, but you're not more human than I am. The one thing we share equally is human equality. We've been augmenting our capabilities for a very long time. It's just about extending capability where it doesn't occur naturally. Active and plantable devices will change what it means to be human more than we've ever seen before. The future of humanity, the future of our bodies will be determined by technology. There's a lot of parallels in science fiction and the kinds of things that we're seeing in the technology world. All of this was so, so far beyond what I thought it would be. Yeah, mind blown. All right, and now we're up for something very exciting in SMR TV, because obviously last year uh, we did well, but we wanted to stretch ourselves a bit and make this a true global experience. So not only are we receiving a lot of guests in the studio at the table, and currently I'm joined by Sarah Cunliffe, you're a member of the program committee of uh, SMR Congress. And by Daniel Fazekas from uh, Hungary, you're the CEO of Bacamo Social. Get to you guys in a second, because we're also trying to connect live to Professor Steve Needal in Atlanta. Steve, are you there? Yes. Ah, all right. We have moving image. We have moving. We don't have sound right. yet, but I think and it's going to work in a, in a minute. Well, good to see you, Steve. Welcome. Uh, uh, it looks like technology is not failing us at the moment. So what we're going to try to do here is to explore whether in the near or mid-term future, at some point, market researchers will be replaced by artificial intelligence, because we all know computers can be much smarter than humans, can cope with much more data than whatever. So let's make a first round. I'll, I'll start with Steve. Steve, in the near future, agree or disagree, will artificial intelligence replace humans? Ah, all right. We have all right. Image. One second, Steve. Let's do that again. I don't have sound of Steve here in my studio. Can we hear him? Well, good to see you, Otherwise, Steve. Otherwise, that's not going to work. Uh, uh, it looks like technology is not failing us at the moment. So, what we're going to try to do here is to explore whether in oh, the Steve, you're still on screen, so you should wave <laughs> and smile. At some point, market research yeah. will be replaced. Can we get him? Can we get sound? No? Because we all know okay. computers can be much smarter. Well, Steve. And that's why we recorded a little backup interview last week, because we were kind of afraid that this uh, would, um, uh, would or could happen. So uh, with that, I asked the question on Steve before that. Steve, do you agree or disagree and why he said that? So Sarah and Daniel, let's have a look at Steve, uh, Steve's opening comments. So Dr. Steve Needell, thanks for joining us here at Isomar TV in recording this time, unfortunately, but still we're very curious to find out what you think about this whole position of AI and uh, market research. But before we start, let's, let's make that definition clear. What would you say is the distinction between automation on the one end and artificial intelligence on the other end in market research? Uh, that's a good question, Hannah. I think automation is simply making tools that work for us and keep us from doing manual labor. Uh, Artificial intelligence, on the other hand, is expecting the computer to come back with a decision, an outcome, a prescription uh, from the data it sees. Well, then let's move to our statement here. Uh, 
artificial intelligence machines are going to replace the market researcher. What do you say? Agree or disagree? Yeah, I would disagree with that. I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen, at least in my lifetime, maybe not in your lifetime. And, and what makes you say that? The state of artificial, it's a couple of things. One is the state of artificial intelligence today. Um, it's getting better and better at doing text analytics. So maybe it's good on the qual side. But when it comes to quantifiable data, I don't think the models are there. I don't think the outcomes are there. AI is meant to predict an outcome and then give you a prescription for that. And I don't think the tools even exist for that. Heck, I'm not sure a lot of marketing researchers know what the pr correct prescriptions are, never mind a machine. So do you actually say you expect it to be better at qualitative research than quantitative research? I do, because the questions we're asking in qual are different questions, and they're more amenable to um, a lot of the things AI does. Um, things like word counts, even with the increase now in context being able to be taken care of. I also think qual researchers are smarter at this. Um, Dave McCoggan did a great piece in the new MR AI seminar in which he says he lets AI find the basic story. And that's where he starts from. Okay. And then he does his homework and says, is this real? In the quant side, we're going to ask it very differently. We're going to ask how accurate is this uh, neural network or whatever type of network we're creating. Well, Dr. Steve Nadel, thank you very much and uh, glad to have you here at ESMR TV. Pleasure to be here. So, welcome back here live now. That was in recording. Um, I understand, Steve, you can hear us. So, uh, let's, uh, let's do a big wave, Sarah and Daniel, on camera three. Steve, thanks a lot for being with us live from Atlanta. Uh, thanks for making those statements uh, last week. And uh, we'll discuss them further. You can listen in. But unfortunately, uh, we cannot hear you at the moment live. So, Steve says he is not expecting artificial intelligence to take over. Sarah, do you agree or disagree? Well, actually, you said artificial intelligence would take over in his lifetime, but then he called out that we're younger. <laughs> exactly. So maybe we have a different question there. I also would side with him and say I think it won't take over. I think it will impact the way that we work, but I don't see it taking over and negating the need for market researchers. Well, let's explore that a little bit. First, go to Daniel. Daniel, agree or disagree? Um, you mean disagree? I don't think that... Uh, AI will kill all, f all researchers. So, so all of them. <laughs> all of them. So, so why is this monster going through this industry? Why do people say that to start with? Because you, you see this happen, right? AI can cover more data, can cover broader research, can search into 70 years of history of data, which a researcher could never do. What do you say to those people? I, I think it depends on your perspective. I mean, having worked in you know, Silicon Valley companies, you obviously get the idea that you can do everything with the data you have because you have really, let's put it simply, simple targets. You want to sell more. You want to sell more clicks. You want to sell, you know, higher AdSense, what, what, what not. So you can really have one metrics that you can optimize on and everything else doesn't really matter. So then you can use your wealth of data to really streamline towards one thing. So, yeah. Ten years ago, you could do really amazing behavioral targeting that's now called, I think, uh, programmatic advertising. There's tons of stuff you can do with data, and it's lots of fun, yeah. especially if you have lots of it, but for really simple, uh, non-creative tasks. Exactly. So you're saying that is not market research, it's just a, a, a stretch of automation that, that Steve was saying. Yes, I think we live in a century where you can automate, you should automate what you can. Okay. Now, Sarah, you're saying, yeah, it might not be true, but it's definitely going to impact yeah. our profession. What impact do you see coming in the near future? I, it stems right from even the very need for market research. If you look at the model of Netflix, their algorithms are machine learning. So by even having the way that Netflix programs are shown to the consumer negated the need to research which programs should be shown to the consumer. And that so basically cuts out market research yeah. out of the chain. So there are some things that machine learning and uh, AI actually impact the need for market research. But within the industry, there will still continue to be things that forward-looking 
I think some of the thing with market mix modeling and looking what computers can do with data sets that have already been collected is a different question to looking forward and what people will want to have in the future. And that's when you need to start having creative minds with qual and quant, but having that mixture and not just having a computer run a whole load of algorithms or run things, but actually having someone who can have their time freed up by automated progress processes, but being able to think creatively about what to do with the data and the insights they get. You agree with that? I then? love the example of Netflix because <laughs> Thank uh, you. because you can yes I think you're totally right you can really optimize what, what the the targeting and if you like this then you like that but when you think about it it's going to be quite a long time before AI will shoot a movie and actually yeah. create creative content. Yeah, okay, but market Get researchers it? are not in a movie creating uh, no, business. No, they are not, but they actually do help clients to come up with new ideas, uh, uh, bring think, create things that haven't been there before. Get it? Yes. I have, uh, I'm chatting with Steve here, yeah, yeah, so yeah. he's oh, kind of with now. us still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he says on the on the Netflix topic, he said, yeah, but Netflix needs MR for generating subscriptions. Yeah. So exactly. on on that note, so yeah. Now I, I'm getting the feeling that we're all very much agreeing on this. So <laughs> so let's so dive deeper. You basically picked a bad panel because you yeah, needed exactly. to have someone well, who thought differently. Yeah. Gonna but disagree that doesn't with matter. Well, it's true. You're here anyway. <laughs> what we can do is is dive a little bit deeper yeah. in in where it. You, you've explained where it impacts, but now how can it be applied? Because it's quite abstract. Let's 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 go quant and qual, but let's make it tangible. Let, like what what are first baby steps that, that researchers could take into this area? Do you have any experience yourself? I mean, it, the line was drawn earlier between the automation and the you know the AI and the programmatic. Um, so actually, it's a sliding, it's a gray scale. I don't think it's one Still thing shocked. is one and one is the other. Um, I think there's already a lot that companies are starting to do with automating processes and not every company is already there and there's still a huge way to go in that and that ability to aut sorry I feel like I've got an echo um, that ability to start automating frees up researchers but I think as we as we build on that and have more programs that are automated I think that starts to pave the way for AI a bit more and I do see the industry actually I don't see it being unimpacted I think the industry will shrink because you'll need less yeah, people yeah exactly because freeing up yeah, is it's not freeing up resources but you're also going to need qual, right? less people yeah to do things. So okay. I think the industry will be impacted. So there's definitely, yeah. well, but that brings us back to the statement that researchers will be replaced I by don't AI think in be some areas, yeah, right? So, some, maybe some researchers will be, yeah, exactly. for sure, but not all of research. And, and where do you see, where, where, could, where could people start? What's, what's the quick wins in, in AI? Well, I think especially when you have sort of unstructured data, but when you know what it is about. So, you know, for example, you know, simple feedbacks from clients or customers on, on review sites. You can see already, like for, for example, a really good way of how AI is used is how Google is summarizing consumer comments on, you know, Google Maps. Yeah. Because it goes through the sentences, it notes what it's looking for and, and does that. I am, for example, using Amy XI, which is an automated AI tool that sets up and schedules, cal you know, meetings for me, and I never need to touch anything. Mm. It does all of it in natural language. There are tons of things that free up time, and and you can actually, yeah. So, but it, it has these concrete things where you can define what you really want. You know, sort of the outcomes, and then, you know, you really know the range of expectations of what you expect the data to the story to tell you. Yeah. Because when where I see the distinction is when you have to come up with the story. Now that's where AI is still lacking, or will probably always lack. So that's that's much more in the explorable side of market yeah. research, right? So you yeah. say there's great opportunities to summarizing findings, yeah. turning data into insights, probably yeah. already. Yeah. Uh, but it will never get you into the new innovative stuff. No, I wouldn't say never say never. But yeah, you know, I mean, I, to give you a concrete example, we did a study on chicken. And chicken? You chicken. <laughs> chicken. <laughs> yeah. Can you do uh, that again? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we found that, uh, you know, in a Central European country, housewives believe that it's the seasoning that makes them fat. Uh, it's not logical, it do, it's not true, but it doesn't matter because that's what they, and they create stories around that. Now, for an AI tool to understand all of that cultural context, all of that, you know, parametrics that, that go into that understanding and, oh my God, they really believe that? Like that, that, that process I don't see yet happening. A computer ever learn, right? Well, learn and, <laughs> and see that things are just not logical. Okay, because people, humans people are, are unlogical. happen to be not <laughs> very logical, no. 
All right. Well, Sarah, anything to add with that? No, I think also the nature of the research questions we're going to be asked is going to change. Um, In I think, what sense? I think, well, as companies change, I think even with customer service, I think with the use of, of bots now to also, I mean, there's a, there's a piece this afternoon uh, which I'm hosting a session on, uh, wow, that's my audience. And there's a, there's a piece there where how do you use bots to use your customer service platform? And, and do people even know they're speaking to one? So I think uh, even as companies change, as the way that they're interacting with their consumers change, I think we're going to see a change in the nature of the research questions that we're asked to answer. Exactly. Well, interesting. Interesting to follow, I guess. And uh, let's follow up on that next year on SMR TV, right? Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Um, we'll see you, you back again in Channel 3 tomorrow, where yes. we talk uh, about social impact of research, where you did some interesting stuff in Hungary. We'll see you back on the Channel 1. Uh, uh, no, on Channel 2, both ways, to okay. this afternoon and tomorrow, right? <laughs> yes. So thank you very Thanks. much for being with us.